Okay, we're gonna do a fun little facility update. So, obviously, active construction going on. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the works at the moment, but you know, I'm being 100% transparent with everybody, so I'm just gonna go through and show everything off right now. So to start off with, you know, we got the floor mostly finished down there at the very, very end where I'm doing most of the construction projects because it's cold in Colorado and I can't really do it outside and it's also been very windy for the last couple of weeks. So really doing any sort of carpentry or saw work or anything outside is very difficult at the moment. So um, I'm just gonna kind of do this and say, hey, there's, there's all that down there. I have a couple racks down there that eventually will be moving over there to the line and the wall, but I am waiting on some adapter cords for some of those larger, uh, some of those larger fixtures over there. And then once I get that figured out and the electricity entirely figured out in the building, I will have those two working on the third one. There will be a fourth in total. So it will be two or three Christmas tree tub racks like that one. Um, that will house larger pythons and uh, a couple of the boas as we continue to upgrade and get more 4x2 and 6 foot enclosures over there. Um, and those will be over there. And then over here are going to be mostly cages over here. There aren't going to be too, too many racks. There is the little um, dual sided rack that I have sitting over there right now. It's not going to stay there. I don't know where I'm going to put it entirely because I need access to both sides readily. So we'll uh, we'll figure it out from there. But as you can probably tell with all the racks here, we've moved quite a few of the animals down. We've already showed off these here already. Are the remaining ones, the ones that need to be redone. Still nothing moved into there. I was waiting to get the ambient temperatures up here and the black-headed python will either be moving into this one um, once I get it cleaned out and redone or a new one that I will be building. Um, and as while I'm sitting here talking, you can probably see the reflection of the glass. Uh, we're gonna come down here and this is Gemini. She will be our shop kitty, hopefully help with the mouse control. Um, updated the way we're gonna hold onto all of the racks um, and build them, so that way hopefully she doesn't ever try to pull any of the animals out of the tubs or enclosures. Um, she's never really done that before when we were still at the house, um, but still, and she's already caught one mouse, so good job, Gemini. And before anyone asks, yes, she is very skinny. Yes, she has been to the vet. No, they do not know why. She is a very healthy old kitty. She's actual. Well, she's not that old. She's uh, 13. But yep, that's the little shop kitty Gemini. So we're going to continue on. Um, this was originally going to be the... Ow, don't bite me, Gemini. Um, this was originally going to be where Juliet's cage is going to sit. Um, the very large Exoterra. Well, it turns out because of the studding that's used to keep it very sturdy, it will not fit. So this is going to become either another just kind of collection rack of multiple storage and obviously it's a mess right now but hey work in progress like i said um so over here is where juliet actually is this is another cage i will probably be putting the yellowtail cree bone here potentially in the other six foot cage over there yes gemini thank you i know gemini i know um so here is juliet um i do not have her light on a timer all the enclosures are on, are yeah all the enclosures in this building are on a 12 hour timer, except for Juliet's. I haven't put hers on there yet because I'm still working out the electrical, everything and sorting and figuring things out. So we're gonna come over here. So there's the big bay door, iron cross is gone. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna paint anything else on that because that is the bay door and that can potentially scrape across the front of the building. So I don't know if I wanna do anything or not. Still need to paint a little bit in that corner. Um, moving along, here's all that shelving that is uh, bolted and screwed into the wall that I don't think I will be painting, or if I do, it's a very last minute project. This will be the for real storage that's gonna house everything. So, you know, all of the excess um, enrichment, fake plants and, and, and sticks and branches and stuff are in these, some overflow there. Um, that is my just pile of miscellaneous reptile artwork and stuff that I don't know where I'm gonna put it all because it is definitely filling up in here. So I don't know, we'll figure that out eventually. Um, substrates of all different kinds. I definitely need to get some more record ship and other different brands. I got mulch, topsoil, play sand, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, this is going to be the paint that I'm gonna use for the inside of the iguana and redfoot tortoise cage, which will be going over there. Um, we'll go to there in a minute. Um, actually, I probably not. That's, that's really going to be it from over there. It's just nothing's really built, and I'm actively reconstructing 
um, racks and cages over there right now. So we're gonna be mostly focusing on this side of here. So as you can see in here, we're still fighting ambient temperatures and stuff. The humidity is significantly lower than I would like it. <clears throat> but that's why um, all the racks are in the plastic ones. It's easier to control humidity. But I have a plan eventually in the pipeline to hopefully help with that. Um, this is going to be probably right where this one is sitting is where the sink is going to go. Um, come spring and summer when it's a little bit warmer outside right now. I'm just dealing with buckets in and out of here, which is fine. Totally fine. Um, it's just kind of like being in the basement or something where you have to walk a little ways for... Uh, your sink. It's just a little bit farther right now. But eventually the sink is probably going to go right here, so this is going to have to find a new place to go. Um, so as you can see, this is will be our shelf for all of our um, hides and water dishes and things like that. Always have lots of extra of these um, because they're machine washable, dishwashable, um, easily changed in and out. Same with these of different sizes, all the different flipped over hides that I'm using all over the place. Um, these are little holdbacks of the, for going on right now. So as you can see, the uh, enclosure setup that we did a while ago. So here is our female banana genetic stripe. There she is. Hello. So we'll just put her back in there. They seem to be doing pretty well in here, although I think I'm going to miss these down. It was looking a little dry. Still have to actively work on that, though. So coming on down the line, you can't call a Jay-Z POV video without some water uh, Mountain Dew in the pipeline. Um, this is going to be the wall of enclosures and cool stuff like that. Still in the process of working. This is a giant whiteboard. I don't know where I'm going to put this, but this is going to be some really cool stuff um, that I'm going to have up here that can actively be worked on and off of. Yes, hello, Gemini. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put that right now, so it's just kind of here because it's. I don't want it in the way and I don't want to get it kicked over. So it's just for the moment right here. Um, over here we have, this is going to be the full line of racks. And so here are the 74 quart tubs that will eventually be used for the adult female ball pythons. Um, and you know, some of the colubrids as well, because I like giving the colubrids larger, um, in tubs as well. And that's what that rack is right there. Those colubrid racks. Um, so right here we have, um, all of the f boas, the, the smaller boas, I should say these two racks here. And then the, around the corner, there is the Christmas tree tub rack over there. Another female ball Python rack over there. Another Christmas tree tub rack that will be housing the Brettles pythons, Fiero, the Burmese python, um, and potentially a couple other different ones and so on and so forth. But we're working on that. We're getting there. Um, over here, this is where the, uh, colubrids are sitting at. Um, this is where those other Christmas tree, not Christmas tree, 74 quart tub racks are going to go is right here. Um, over here we have the more female ball pythons and these were and tubs. So a lot of people have asked me, where can I find these tubs? These guys are only a target that I can only ever find them only around Christmas tree, uh, only around Christmas time. And they sell out very quickly. Like there's always the little ugh, Gemini, you're the worst. Um, there's always the dance that I do going to a bunch of different targets around the holiday season, around uh, Thanksgiving through Christmas, trying to find these. But this year, um, Target, as well as a couple other places, started selling these tubs. And the footprint for them is very similar to these. Um, it's actually a little bit wider, um, not quite as long and not quite as tall. This is like a 6970 quart, and this is the 74 quart. Um, and these, I found them at Target. They still had quite a few all over the place, and I found them at Lowe's um, for considerably much more. But these guys seem to be either the replacement or something else entirely, maybe just the lower profile, because these are technically like under bed, um, like mat, like mattress cover, blanket boxes, and things like that. Um, so here we are here. I have an empty one here. Um, these are for eventually more female ball pythons or very large males like Kalamazoo, although Kalamazoo will be moving to a, a 4x2 cage again. I just don't have anyone to put them for the moment. Um, Tucson, the giant leopard Mojave. And there was a couple people when I did the tour at the house, you know, right before we bought this place, that asked if we could go through a lot of the snakes almost individually. And so what I think I might do is I might do kind of like a speed through of those and then I'm going to try to be a good little noodle and start to actually use the TikTok platform a little bit better. And when I do that in here while I'm talking, we're just going to show off a couple right now. Um, this is Madison. She is a GHI kingpin slash GHI lesser and pinstripe. Um, she's really, really cool. 
Um, the fluorescent lighting is different than I'm used to in here, and so hopefully you can kind of see how pretty she is. She's really cool. She's in shed right now, so normally she's a little bit brighter, but she just went past blue, so she's going to shed in the next day or so. Um, but that being said, it's really cool. But I'm going to try to use that TikTok platform to actually do kind of like an individual quick little like 30, 45 second little thing of the different ball pythons and all of the snakes in general. Um, here's Utah. She's doing really cool. Um, I'm hoping she, and you know, I'm, again, in full transparency, there are going to be a few animals that have gone through here that are not, that did not have the best sheds. Um, constantly moving like this, I will absolutely 100% admit that I'd not give as much time as I normally would because I've been on the road consistently. Like I said, it's a four hour drive between here and Denver. So I've been on the road a lot, so I haven't been able to dedicate as much time as I normally have. But since they've gotten here, I've been doing much, much better about that. So hooray! Um, little cart, because we always gotta have anybody who has a large area with large amount of snakes, they know that a cart and these buckets are absolutely uh, diet, uh, they're, they're, they're stupendous and we absolutely need those. Here is a cool little girl. Um, uh, she has a hold back from last year, our super orange dream. So like I said, again, not the best, uh, shed there, but look at that. She is so pretty. Um, and I have a couple boys that I am debating on what I want to do with her, including possibly even putting our, uh, desert ghost mail to her to get orange dream at desert ghosts. Um, but I haven't quite fully decided what I want to do um, in total. Well, that was kind of weird. Look at that. It doesn't actually... That is really weird on the... Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's not actually flashing like that on that thermostat. It just freaked me out for a second. Um, it's sitting fine just to 86 right now. That's really funny. Um, these are the boy, the male ball pythons. The smaller ones that I keep in the 41 quarts because I keep my females who get bigger in bigger tubs because I think we need to give our snakes more room. So that's where these guys are right now. Um, this is going to be the colubrid rack full setup. So I had some ball pythons in here um, that I don't like these for keeping ball pythons um, unless like it's, it's just so hard to keep humidity in these. Um, I don't like it as much. I like those a little bit better. It works better in my personal opinion. So these are going to be for my colubrid snakes. And so for like the Christmas mountain gophers and the, and the, and the pine snakes and these guys are, those are going to go here. Um, eventually, you know, like the corn snakes that we will use not for breeding and like the king snakes too, that we use more for educational purposes and programs. Once we get that started, um, they're going to go in here as well as those bigger ones. And then we'll spin around. Sorry, a little spin around a little 32 quart rack for grow outs. Um, a lot of these will be moving to the 41 quarts up once we move the last little um, thing down. And I'll do the full tour once we are finally set up, obviously. Just giving you guys another little update. But it's going to be 41 quarts there, and then it'll be three 41 quarts here. So it'll be a full giant stack right here of like four of, I don't know, let's see how many is that, six or seven times six. So 36-ish animals over here. Um, so yeah, these guys are going to move over there. Um, in there, that is the podcast room and office. We'll just pop in here really quick. Um, it is absolutely a disaster, but again, just showing off some school stuff, um, stuff for the podcast eventually. I'm going to do something with this wall. Um, I had my faux wood wall in the background that I used to really like um, back at the house, but, you know, we might do painting there. This is maybe we'll do a lot of the artwork and stuff there, but we'll see. Um, yes, again, hello, Gemini. Um, and then we'll cruise along here. So this is going to be our wall of cages and enclosures. Um, it is still being worked on, obviously, like everything else. Um, but, you know, they see there's O'Malley, our Mexican black king snake. He's just chilling like a villain. Um, couple, that's a little baby Sambo in there until I move it to a larger tub. Um, Sambo, as I do keep in tubs, um, and I'm working on a cool little shelf for those. Uh, because that seems to be the animal that's surrendered to me most often. I've never actually purchased a sandboa, but I have several that I've just been inherited to. Um, the little guy who he's doing okay in here gave him an upgrade out of that 20, uh, that 20 long, which I did not like him in. He needed more room. Still a little too small to go with the adult uh, tortoises, but that's where he is in for the time being. Um, you know, this is the bioactive there king snake setup. Um, this is the sandfish. I gave him, he wasn't a 10, upgraded this, mixed in several different types of sandy substrates, and he still tools through that very easily. 
Empty tank. Up here we have the fat tail geckos that are doing really well. Shoshone, our northern pine snake that we'll be moving to. Hopefully I'm going to put her in a uh, 4x2 enclosure with the glass opening. Um, she hated the Christmas tree tubs. Um, even though this, the Christmas tree tubs are larger than these, but she didn't like that. She liked being in this open thing in this glass. And so I'm hoping she will enjoy that and she'll still have plenty of room. Um, if I mentioned before, I have not, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but this is the really cool, like half attempted at like the leaf litter enclosure or the leaf litter type, uh, substrate that I like a lot, 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 um, with a bunch of really cool, like oak leaves and pine needles and stuff. Um, over here, we have just an empty cage. Um, and I'll talk about those guys in just a second. Um, this is the leopard gecko, our rescue leopard gecko with MBD. Um, she is doing really well. We'll come over right over there. There she is, hanging out in her little humid hide. Um, that's where she spends kind of during the day. She's usually over here in this cooler part. Um, and I say cooler, like the whole setup of... Um, of these enclosures have changed a little bit. I got to redial it in. This used to be where um, this would be the more humid side. Sorry, let me back up a little bit. Um, that would be the more humid side over here. This would be the more arid side. Um, but I just wanted to change it up. She had a little bit of a stuck shed. Nothing, nothing terrible at all, but I put that back over there and she got that off in like a day. And so right now it's just sitting over there for just kind of feng shui balance. But I'm working on that right now. Um, that's the little woodhouse toad. Um, she's hanging out back there. Those are a couple little baby colubrids in the sand boas that we'll be moving to better uh, tubs in the meantime. So we're going to set that back down right there. And then over here we have our little colubrids. Oh man, I'm getting old. Um, so the Transpecos rat snake that I've talked about a little bit a couple different times. Yes, hello Gemini. Um, this is the just kind of pet hobby milk snake. Um, it's probably a Pueblin, but I'm not 100% sure. It's just milk snake um, is what I was given. So that's what... I just call that one, and I'm pretty sure it's a male, not 100% sure. Uh, admittedly, god awful at sexing colubrids. Um, this is Nez Pierce, the male gray man and king snake. His girlfriend will be coming out of quarantine next month, as well as quite a few other animals. That'll be really fun. And then Rosie, the rosy boa, in here. Um, eventually, I want to get one more of those out longer 36 ones with the short ones, and I'll put Rosie on top of O'Malley over there. That'll look really cool. Um, and then another smaller colubrid will probably go there. Uh, so that is this for the most part. Um, I think this looks pretty good. Let's see if we can kind of back up a little bit again and get a nice little shot. Uh, there we go. So yeah, that's, I think this will be pretty cool. Um, I won't be able to put too many more racks in here. So similarly to down in the basement of my house in Denver, I'll be very soon constricted on the amount that I have. But, you know, looking at this, it's going to be, you know, 10 of those. So that's another 20 rat, 20 slots open there and plenty more in the meantime and lots of stuff upgrading and things like that. I'll talk more specifically about what's going on over on this side. Um, my plans of eventually doing something to helpfully help with the ambient humidity I might put over here. Um, that's the, uh, those, those pile of timber right there. That's going to be the iguana redfoot cage. Um, once I can clear some of this out, I'll be working on that. I should have the adapters here next week. Um, so hopefully that'll be starting to be worked on by then and all this can get cleared out and the rack wall will be finished. Um, obviously the sink will have to wait till next spring, but everything else will be cleared and done hopefully by February. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about these guys over there. Um, so really um, all that is left of as far as animals moving down here, um, we have uh, one more Tegu, um, Severus, our big uh, Guyana boa, and then the third, and then the the remaining animals that are going to go in this tub. And as I've talked about in previous videos, um, I took the one empty one. I'm going to rebuild this rack here, and I'm going to do it in this fashion, like this over here, um, to where it's going to have a couple smaller ones on the top for more space. Uh, I think that'll be really cool. Um, and then so the the pair of Brettles and Fiero will be moving into this rack. Um, as well as potentially future animals or other animals that are going to be, you know, getting larger put into there are going to go into that. Um, and then over here, so the Tegu, who's sitting under there right now, 
Um, this will be a little stack right there. So it'll be Sev, Tegu, Tegu. That'll be right here next to this stack over here. Um, and then the Iguana Cage will be right here, basically in between these two outlets. Um, that may end up stay, the this may stay there. We, we'll see, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, because there's that other little rack over around the corner that still needs to find a place to. Um, gonna try to keep this area fairly clear of big stuff because that's the big exhaust fan and I might need that during the summer. I don't really know. Um, Potentially, I have all of this shelving and storage up there that I'll have to figure out some use for. Um, the incubators are going to go there. Um, and then this is a big bench that's bolted into the wall. I'm going to put the hippos along there. And hopefully, I will have a larger enclosure that I'm working on. Again, pipelining of stuff that they'll be moving into. And then I have um, what I'm potentially going to do because waste not, want not and all. I have those uh, white strips over there of extra melamine from these large uh, racks that I have to do out of melamine because they're too heavy when I stack them this high to use a uh, PVC um, that I might make into shelves up there for cool storage or maybe even for display of some stuff. I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, and then over here is where I will be probably putting the extra tubs or enclosures or whatever that doesn't really fit. Um, this is just an extra little stand until either I find a better purpose for it, get rid of it and start getting more stacks of, uh, four by two cages or something similar. Um, I would like to get more enclosures and more large things and have a bigger collection in general. So that'll be three more enclosures right there and then potentially some over there, but blah, 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 blah. we'll get to it right there. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this cool little update video. Um, and I managed to do the entire video without coughing too. Hooray, I'm finally starting to feel a little bit better. But hopefully again, you enjoyed the little cool video setup as I stumble over things. Um, so another little update, forgive the mess, active construction. Uh, Gemini, you wanna say goodbye to anybody? Okay, that's cool. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for future updates. If you want more stuff uh, sooner, go check out my Patreon because I have to do better about self-promotion. Um, again, I am really, really trying to work on starting up the podcast again, um, reaching out to different people. Um, I think I actually w might be a guest on someone else's. We'll, we'll see about that. I, someone reached out a little while ago. And so I think they're trying to figure that out right now too. Um, but we'll see, uh, again, hope everybody, everyone's having a nice, uh, 2022. Um, this has been one heck of a beginning. Um, it's been frustrating in some ways, mostly having to travel so much. Um, working, having to mess with those outlets and things like that. Um, but this is really cool and I am very excited uh, for the future. You know, that way once we get everything set up, I get plumbing in here, we can get all nice and certified to start breeding on a larger scale. We can get all insured and licensed to start doing um, larger in-person education things. So that'll be really cool. Um, if anyone is interested in an online Zoom tour, or an online educational show, or locally in Colorado, please reach out to me on any of our social media at jzsreptiles at gmail.com. That'd be amazing. Um, really wanna get started working on that, and we can do all sorts of different levels of interest and knowledge. So again, that was my little bit of self-promotion bit. Hopefully everyone's having a great time, and we'll check you next time.